This week on Kentucky Afield, it's going to take more than just a little rain to keep the rabbit dogs from running on opening day. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Next, trappers from across the state come together to solve a big problem in western Kentucky. The entire bottom half of that soybean field is flooded. Then, we visit one of the nation's most interesting trout streams, Hatchery Creek. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Yeah, we got one, sweet. Yeah, muskrat? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> what do you know about that, man? That's a good fish, man. Nice male, small mouth, healthy, pretty color. Cody, here. Find us one more good fish, Cody. As biologists, we, we catch ducks and we place bands on them. And it's just a really excellent place to see cottonmouths. What do you think? Like bull. That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Kentucky Afield. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. If you'd love to hear beagles chase rabbits, rain or shine, you're not gonna miss opening day. Well, Leroy, Familiar face. Yes, sir, we're doing it again. We are out here again on your piece of property. You know, the first time we met, we were, uh, you had a piece of property that you put in the, uh, the co-op program for the dove field. Yes, sir, yes. Sir. And I was talking to you yes, and you sir. said, you know what, I love to run beagles. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> well, uh, we said then we gotta get together because this That's is one right. of my favorite things in the world to do is rabbit hunt. Yes, sir. We didn't yes. wait too long, did we? Today's yeah. opening day. Opening day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm excited. Yeah, you got a bunch of dogs here. Yeah. A bunch of nice looking beagles. You brought your buddy with you too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's Evan Chavez from, from Kentucky State, and uh, we're real good friends. He co-ops with us with the farming and you know small farmers, and he's really good help. Type of guy. Well, we're glad to have you out here That's today. So we're gonna, what, what type of trainer we're gonna be uh, hunting here? Well, this, this this particular farm is all alfalfa orchard grass, okay. and it's gonna be mowed pretty good, so it'll be pretty good terrain for us. We have a a, a, a little a little bit of cover that the cover that's on it. It's, it's gonna be loaded, should be loaded with rabbits. I ain't gonna say it's gonna be, but I'm, I'm hoping that it you've will be. You've been seeing some rabbits, so you've worked your dogs a little bit. I, uh, I've got them ready, ready, got them ready for for the season. Well, well, I tell you what, I think we're going to be dodging rainstorms today, but uh, that, that's okay. But uh, we'll, we'll get out and walk behind these dogs and hopefully kick up a couple bunnies. Yes, sir. This is Brownie, Blue, Cookie, and Lady Red right here. Lady Red. Lady Red. No Cookie. Hold on, Cookie. I think they coach trailing one, one from that this morning. I figured we'd go up around here. Okay. And uh, a couple of us get out on the outside, one on this side. All right. And then we'll walk up and we'll come around and come down around. Go, Cookie. Come on, Big Mama. Come on, baby. Let's get one up. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. You said you started this when you were 15, started hunting with 15. your dad? This farm has been in the farm family since I was, since I was a little bit of a boy. Is that right? Yes, sir. When I was a little boy, I, I used to drive and hunt all the time. My grandfather and my, my father never always wanted us to, to uh, try to walk around and kick them up the hard way. Yeah, so yeah. that way you learn to appreciate a dog. Yeah. And one of us was always obligated to, to play the dog <laughs> in the briars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be the dog today? Yeah, you know, yeah. You'd be the dog today. They gonna kick your rabbits up out here. You gotta get you in gotta there. Get in there, man. <laughs> I'm waiting on you out here. <laughs> yeah, I, I man. I played that role. <laughs> <laughs> we'll walk them all back here and see if we can't get something up back here in the back. Yeah. Here comes another one. 
<laughs> well, we got one down, though. First rabbit of 2017 right here <laughs> with Mr. Leroy Blue. <laughs> what dog you got there? A cookie. Cookie. Good cookie. Like, yeah. There's get another it, one right get there. It, There's one right there. Come on, get out here. What's your favorite way to have rabbits? I like to fry it real good and then take and then take and pull, pull off all my grease and make gravy and then put it back in and simmer. You and me both. Cover it and simmer it and it just falls right off the bone oh, real nice and juicy and wet. Yeah. And perfect. That's such a nice piece of property to, to yeah. train dogs. To train dogs on. Because you know, there's not any real big roads near this area either. Uh -uh. So you don't have to worry about dogs getting out and getting on these roads. Golly. Actually, Rabbit ran out. He was right on the edge. And uh, he actually stopped and by the time I got my gun up, he went back in. And I didn't want to shoot because I didn't know if the dog was right there. Every now and then I'll oh. hunt and shoot if I want to eat one, but I like to keep them in here for, 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 oh, for guests yeah. like you. Yeah. Because everybody don't have a place to hunt, and that's the reason why I do the, do, I do the dove shoot mm -hmm. and try to do a good job at it mm -hmm. so that, you know, people's got a place to still got to hunt. Here you come. I think I got him. Oh, yeah, he did. Awesome. Yeah, he got him. All right. He came across there creeping. Dogs jumped him. Dogs were behind him, and he came right on through. Well, Leroy, thanks again for yes, having sir, us. It was a lot of fun. Yes, it sure Man, was we, a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun hunting with you. I appreciate yes, you guys sir. letting me tag along with you yes, today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was, sound like, I, I enjoyed you. Sound like the dog's still ready to go. They're still ready to go, I, believe. <laughs> I think they outhunt us today. I know they outhunt us because I don't know how many rabbits we end up seeing, but uh, they, they, they ran them. made three shots, but we probably saw close yeah. to 10 rabbits. Yes, sure did. A good, so. a good day. But you know, good day. that's pretty common when you're hunting a place. You got a lot of thickets here, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. why you got rabbits. That's right. You've let it grow in, and you've got plenty of habitat. Exactly. And I'd much rather shoot it one out of every four or five and see plenty of rabbits to come out here and not see rabbits. Not see rabbits, exactly. So exactly. the dog's got to work out. I got a little workout early in the year. It's kind of like <laughs> get out and do a little walking. But you got it a great place. Thanks. Hey, looks like we got a couple couple bunnies for the pot, too. Hey, Amen. Can't beat that. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a landowner that's having trouble with nuisance wildlife on your property, the first call you should make is to a trapper. There's a farmer's soybean field here. The entire bottom half of that soybean field is flooded. Beaver complaints are truly my number one phone call. Flooding timber, flooding crop fields, damming up creeks, uh, flooding roads, and uh, it's just been a huge monumental problem and gotten more severe over the years. And you were having some cities and some municipalities calling up saying they were spending a significant amount of money to clean this up so that the roads were usable. That's right, in Hopkins County, adjacent to Muhlenberg County, their road department spent over $100,000 cleaning culverts, regrading road. Actually, I was at a Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting and started voicing, just talking to people. And Chet Hayes, president of the United Trappers, overheard me and approached me and said, we, we want to help you. You guys quickly advertised that there was going to be some trappers here right. to help out with any nuisance beaver problem that you had on public or private property. That's correct. And the calls started flooding. <laughs> they started coming in quick. We put out a little flyer that United Trappers of Kentucky were coming. It's going to be free of charge. And I've gotten over 55 property owners calling, wanting us to come help. And I'm still, I got one this morning. You can see this little leaf dam. It's just leaves and mud all the way across here. It's got this whole soybean field in back of us backed up and useless. So that's all wasted crop. But the beaver, when they're in here, they cross over at this little spot here. That's called a crossover. You can see where it's packed and it's thin. You can see where they've been sliding over there. 
and then they come right down here and underneath this log here there's there's a perfect pinch point and they've got to swim right through there to get under that log and into our trap and you can see where we've got our body grip trap position down there So here with Steven and Jeremy, you brought us out here on this piece of property where you've already got a couple sets out, correct? Yes. How many, how many sets do you have? Uh, we have about 11 or 12 up and down this stretch of creek here, about a half a mile. Both you gentlemen are uh, involved with the United Trappers of Kentucky. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm the executive director for United okay. Trappers of Kentucky. We're the largest trapping organization in the state. We have 250 to 300 members. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I'd love to get in here and let's take a look and see, see what we may have. Let's go see if we got one. All right. Well, I see our first beaver. It uh, right there. So that's in a snare. Right? He's, yeah, that beaver's been snared on this crossover. Yeah, just like the previous uh, crossing that we just looked at yeah. back there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay, well, let's go take a look. And that looks like a good sized beaver. Yeah, he's probably 40 pounds, I'm guessing. He might weigh 45 yeah. or more. He's yeah, a good sized good beaver. Size beaver. There was one beaver caught in, in Muhlenberg County here years ago and certified over 120 pounds. Now, I think it was within a pound or two, give or take, of the world's biggest. I mean, it's not standing up. I see one of the support sticks, and we have a beaver. Uh-oh. They had a slide going up right here, pretty, pretty heavily used slide. I think they were going over to that pond, but they also had a narrow channel swimway here that was just perfect. So yeah, the slides right here, you're talking about entering some yes. tracks and stuff in there. Yeah, I see no talking about. There you go, that's when, that's the critter causing all this damage. Now one of them, huh? Yeah. One of them. <laughs> all right, there you go. Look at the teeth. It's amazing what one of these here can do, how much damage they can do with their teeth. And it's no wonder why they're such good swimmers. You're talking about moving some water. This is a dam we're coming up to here. Well, we may have a beaver in that one. That's a pretty good sized dam. Right here, we have a trap. And we got something in it too. So in a situation like this, where you have a big dam and then a bunch of debris, it takes a little bit more study it just does. trying to find the location yeah. to trap. Yeah, and I imagine if those beavers come down or up, one place they gotta go is right there. Right there. And that's where the trap is. Because that's that's really the flow of water. I got one beaver. Alright. Alright. I knew you I knew you'd have one there. Double? Double. Alright. Why that killed that beaver quick or Jeremy? It did. He never He never moved, did he? No. And you can tell because it's up there on the front of the Hibati, is that why you he, say yeah, that? No, he just hasn't moved from the the set. That's a pretty good sized beaver. I hate to tell you, Jeremy, but that won't be the biggest beaver. I know it. <laughs> I know it. That's bigger than any one we've caught today, though. Worked exactly like it's supposed to. Yep. So this right here is a perfect example why these landowners are wanting some of these beavers removed. There's supposed to be a road that comes down from this gate and crosses this creek and right here. Because the beavers have dammed this up, the water has gotten deep enough that there's no way you can get a tractor through there. So this is actually hampering his ability to farm his land. You ain't got the big beaver anymore, Jeremy. And so that thing looks like the tail on it's really big yeah, and wide. Right. This is a good beaver. That's a pretty good sized beaver. Yeah, this is a good beaver. <laughs> and see, now that's the way it's supposed to catch. That right there is a perfect catch. Yeah, right by the head. Yep, that animal probably never flinched. This has got to help the situation. I mean, you guys are gonna be here for a few more days, probably get a few more. This has gotta help this farmer situation here. Yes, that's, that's what we're here for. I'll tell you what, I've learned a lot about trapping today. I've learned a lot about how much damage these things can cause when they're not kept in check. And uh, I appreciate you guys coming out and doing this Thank and showing you. me Thank the ropes. Coming out. And hopefully, you're gonna save this farmer, help him raise a little more money on his property. And you know, some of these areas, we got trappers out today that are doing this right on roads and near an airport. Hopefully they'll save the county some money too. Now let's check in and see who's catching what and where in this week's fishing report. 
this is Jeremy Shiflett with an update for Northwest Kentucky. Nolan River Lake is at Winter Pool with temps in the upper 40s. Bass are hanging on steep rocky banks in the lower portions of the major creeks and on main lake points. Uh, jerk baits, jigs, and finesse baits in blue, black, and green pumpkin have been successful. Crappie are hanging in about 10 feet of water in standing timber and on brush. Anglers using spider rigs with minnows have been having success from the wax area down to the mouth of Dog Creek. Rough River Lake is still in the process of drawing down to Winter Pool. It is about 15 feet below and dropping about 8 tenths a day. Crappie anglers have been catching fish on brush and in standing timber in 10 to 12 feet of water using jigs and minnows. The bass bite has been decent around Main Lake Points and Creek Mouth with rocky shorelines. Be aware of changing weather and water conditions. Remember to dress warm and wear your life jacket. This is Tom with your fish report from the Northeast. The end of this week has brought our first real cold shot of the year, so if you're one of the few brave ones heading out to the water, there are a handful of great opportunities out there for you. Crappie on Cavern Lake have picked up a bit. One of the big areas is in the confluence region of North Fork and Licking River. Sauger is always a winter staple for us. Most of you know about the great fishing behind the Ohio River locks and dams, specifically the Greenup Dam, but similar conditions can be found on the Kentucky River. Lastly, all of our winter trout streams and lakes have been stocked, including Eagle Lake on the campus of Moorhead State University, to take advantage of MSU's Rec Center Outdoor Center by renting a canoe or kayak to hit the lake. With our first cold snap of the season, ramps are icy and the water is even worse. Be sure to wear a life jacket and make sure you tell someone where you're going and when you plan on coming back. Good luck to you and stay safe. This is Marcy Anderson with the Fishing Report for Southeast Kentucky. On Lake Cumberland, water temperatures have been cooling and are in the upper 50s. Based on recent sampling, the striped bass have moved into the upper portions of the creek. Drifting small shad and alewives are a good bet this time of year, but if you can't find live bait, try casting dollflies or grubs. On Lake Cumberland tailwater, we have seen an increase in the number of slot-sized rainbow trout being caught. Inline spinners and small crankbaits are good options to try. On Laurel River Lake, water temperatures have been in the mid-50s. Smallmouth bass are being caught on main lake points. Jigs have been a good bet as of late. Walleye can be found on main lake points and mouths of creeks. Try trolling crankbaits in 20 to 30 foot of water. Elsewhere in the district, 1,800 rainbow trout were stocked in procured ponds at the end of November. So good luck and good fishing. If you're a fly fisherman and you haven't checked out Hatchery Creek, you're really missing out. Brad, good seeing you again. You too, Chad. How are you? I am doing really good. I am excited to be back out here again. It's been since the opening of Hatcher Creek back in April since I've been down here, and I'm getting some great reports. People telling me that fish are moving out of the river. Tell me, are you seeing some of this too? Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of really nice, really good sized fish from coming up out of the river, coming up here to spawn. Hopefully today we'll be able to catch some, see them on the red, and show everybody what that is. We're talking about nests, right? Yes, that's where trout pair up, and they're laying eggs, cleaning off the gravel. Trout fishing is a little bit of a new thing for me, so let's get out there and get after it and see if we can't catch some let's fish. Let's do it. All right. So Hatchery Creek is kind of getting a reputation to catch some trophy quality fish. Yes sir, we've been catching them everywhere from about two or three inches all the way up to 24, 25 inches. That's a big difference. Yeah. And this creek is catch and release only and you said artificial bait only, right? Well, artificial lure and fly only, nothing organic. Gotcha, okay. We're here in the middle of the week on a day where you gotta be a diehard to be out here. A little bit of wind, you're supposed to get some rain, but you know there's a lot of fish and there's still tons of opportunities or not. There it is. There is a ton of fish in this creek. Today we're fishing tandem nymph rig under a heavy indicator with some weight without hardly any line outside of the rod. So don't be afraid to put a little bit of muscle into it to drive it to where you Smack want it. Smack it in there, all right. Because that'll also drive those nymphs down into the water. Gotcha. All right, get a little dip. Yep. Boom. Line up, line up, line up. There you go. Now lead it, lead it, lead it. There we go. Fish on. Sweet. Nice little fish. That's awful exciting. Gonna get it? downstream of you real quick. The one that hits like that. Oh, missed him. Coming back to you. Got it. There you go. Awesome. Got a rainbow there. Yes, sir. Fantastic. 
What we got there, about 11 inch fish or something? About 11 inch rainbow. Looks like he's had a little run in with one of our cranes that we have down here. You can <laughs> oh. see his scars right there on his side. Yeah, almost got him a meal, didn't he? Almost, he's trying to. Well, that's a beautiful fish. He loved the color of those things and speckled back. Just a beautiful little rainbow trout. Let's get this one back and go for some more. What do you think? I like it. Let's get him in the water. All right. We'll move down to this next pool downstream. All right. So you got a little bit of a deep pocket right here that goes around this rock. So this is a good spot here? Yes, sir. All right, let's give it a go here. Perfect. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at that jump. <laughs> there we go. This is what you call a cut bow. It's a hybrid between a cutthroat and a rainbow. Okay. And you can tell, if you look underneath his jaw right there, you see those two little orange cuts? Oh yeah. That's a cut bow. That is really cool. And how big do these get? They can get all the way up to about 24. That's a beautiful fish. Dude, we can't get a bigger one. What do you Let's think? do it. All right, awesome. And he's gone. Nice fish, nice fish. Yeah, this is a little better than the last one. Nice. All right. Look at that. Awesome. That's a nice looking fish. That little fly hooks him right at the roof of the mouth, doesn't it? Exactly. It's got a curved shank yep. so that when you set, it takes it and it drives it up into the roof of his mouth. One trick that you can use to kind of tame fish is to turn them upside down. Mm -hmm. If you have a really wily one that's not wanting to cooperate. I think I'll just do that with sharks and it works really well. This fish is really thin. So is there a chance that this thing could potentially already drop some eggs or spawned? Or it... It's a very good chance that she's already dropped her eggs. You can tell it's a female. See how she has a real blunt nose? Yes. And it's real rounded. A male's jaw is going to come out. You're going to have a little kite coming out of them. Another telltale sign that she's been spawning, this missing corner of her fin, and then you can tell right there on the end of her tail where it's all frayed out. She's been fanning red. Let's get this thing back in. Let yep. her go back to what she was doing. All righty. Oh, little girl. Fish. Come on over here, fish. Pretty fish. Pretty little fish, no rainbow. Significant lateral line there. That's how these fish can hear, basically, in the water. They feel the vibration. That's really cool. come up here around this next bend. That's going to be our next spot. All right. And it's every 20, 30 yards is a new spot. Exactly. Here we go. There you go. Here we go. What a cool day. I learned a lot about fishing a creek with you today, and I just really appreciate you taking your time and showing everyone out there what a wonderful resource this is. I enjoy it immensely. That's why I'm out here. I enjoy teaching people how to fish. I'm glad I could help. It's just a lot of fun. This ain't my last trip. Let's come back and do it again. Looking forward to it. Now let's see who else is out there having fun as we check out this week's ones that didn't get away. Now here's a nice bass caught in Lake Cumberland by twins, Harry and Luke Waldrop. Nice job. Here we have Cade McCulley of Slaughters, Kentucky with his second turkey of the 2016 season. Took this bird to Union Star. Nice job. Here is three-year-old Aaron Markham with his very first fish ever, a bluegill. He caught that at a farm pond in Jefferson County. Nice job. Here we have Braden Hunter. He's holding his first two doves he's ever harvested, taken in Poppy's sunflower field. Good shooting. Here is Ed Connell of Louisville, Kentucky, showcasing his nice 2017 
bull elk that he took with a bow and arrow. Nice job. Make sure you join us next week as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of releasing elk back in the state of Kentucky. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Till next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.